What is going on? I'm Zed Mod. I said no videos today, but up from the ski hill, Warship Season 20 is here, and there's all sorts of good stuff. This is my base. You'll see that I've got that one engine room off to the side. All the buildings drawing all of the attention elsewhere. Fairly important. Getting people's troops to split. Here is my tech tree. Level 1 flares. Do not spend anything on flares. Maybe later on, but the fact that we're rushing to Seekers means probably not a big deal. Your gunboat. Don't waste anything upgrading your gunboat right now. We're going to need some shocks, but realistically, nothing all that important. Troop health, max that out. Max your warriors out, as per usual. Get those machine guns up to tick four. Same thing with your flamethrowers, same thing with your snipers. And the reason why tick four is because tick five doesn't give an extra building, so maxing them isn't all that important right away. You want to save those tokens for later on. I have also not maxed my rifleman, which is somewhat not awesome because I am using Kavan and his second wind extensively, but those low level rifles aren't a big deal because Kavan's bringing back warriors more so than anything. And we are going this route over through shocks. You're going to need shocks anyways. Defensive building damage isn't a big deal. I'm not going to go up that top path. I am rushing to seekers. Seekers, seekers, seekers are the goal right now because there's nothing that will be able to stop it. We're going to be into shock mines, we're going to be into barrage, and then seekers. We're going to have GBE, shock mines, seekers, barrage, oh my. Now anyways, going to quickly show you a couple replays here. Winning, 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 as you can see, just crushing. Now the times, you want to be about 317, 319. I haven't had the best times here, and I'm, the fact that I'm still winning is kind of surprising, so maybe my base is doing some good things. But overall, it's all about managing your troops. We're going to drop some on the left, use our shocks to keep them alive. And then Kavon's going to use his GBE to keep these people on the right alive. And when I say Kavon's going to use his GBE, I mean he's going to use his ability, his healing, and second wind. I'm just babbling at this point. I believe my best time is like 3.20 or something like that. Uh, people, you know you're fast when people retreat. I think this is actually my fastest time. I think it was like 3.22 or something like that. And again, splitting your troops up, getting them splitting, and picking where Kavan's going to be. You don't need to use any flares. Gunboat energy, not really a big deal. That troop health doing super, super well to keep your troops alive. And now that we are on, what's that, a seven times win streak? Instantly time to get in here and start losing. That is just how things go. This is the first person I've seen with boom cannons, I think. And now we're going to have to spread our troops fairly smartly so we're gonna go one two in here and then we're gonna go like this and the reason for those first in initial yes first initial uh splitting is that that way our troops are gonna go every different way by getting rid of those middle ones we're gonna allow our troops to split and by doing that it's gonna open us up to all sorts of good options so flamethrowers are i've seen only seen one person who doesn't have flamethrowers and they are the easiest bases you could ever come across so make sure you go get flamethrowers as soon as you possibly possibly can because without flamethrowers you're not gonna have a heck of a lot of luck because warriors against machine guns just crush them because obviously w machine guns have blind spots whereas flame throwers don't our time is going to be i'm going to guess about 312 314 so not bad looks like it's going to be enough for a win as we tune in and see rc and this minefield on this right hand side is kind of like watching hammerman fleet i love watching people's troops just get absolutely obliterated by it not the nicest thing in the world but winning is more important than being nice i suppose you see i've got 31 keys sitting here waiting to be used um we can unlock our grenadiers sure just so that way we know we're 60 keys behind grenadiers i'm not going to be upgrading just waiting waiting going to be saving all of my tokens probably for barrage shock mines we're going to unlock but i'm going to be probably saving my tokens for barrage because that's going to be more helpful than shock mines in the short term but that could change and that's the beautiful thing about not spending is that you can always spend it later but you can't unspend in warships we're going to go five with Kavon on the left and we're going to go three on the right just because that's not a big deal. Kavon, second wind. I have been popping second wind far too early and the problem with that is you end up getting riflemen and riflemen aren't super duper helpful um, in this early, early stages. But now that we're getting in here close to this flamethrower, I'm going to throw my next shock. 
I did not manage my troops on that left hand side or the right hand side very well. So this is going to be my worst attack in the history of warships, I think. We've got no warriors on the left. We've got no warriors on the right. I should just, I'm just going to retreat. This is just an absolute embarrassment. Three minutes, 21 seconds, and we are back on the boats. So, you know, your time is bad when you're back on the boats when you're normally finishing. So, Gregamend, uh, Gregamend, well done. Your base clearly stumped me and I did not split my troops well. So, without instant training, this season is going to be a bit of a pain for sure because there's just going to be all sorts of defenses. Speaking of instant training, if you're going to go buy instant training, do consider throwing Zedmot in your creator boost. Just throw someone, anyone in there is more important, preferably a small creator as opposed to someone who has millions and millions of subscribers. Um, one thing to be aware of is that as there are more and more defenses, it's going to get to be more and more of a slaughter for your troops. So rushing four engine rooms, rushing three engine rooms, rushing five engine rooms is going to be far, far better than sticking around and just watching your troops get obliterated. Like we're still seeing not max level flamethrowers, which means that we can still send our troops in there and they're still going to do all right. You see that flamethrower didn't actually kill any troops, I don't think. So get your attacks in early on before things harden up because three engine rooms in about a week's time is going to be awful just absolutely bloodbath terribleness so the faster you can get into four engine rooms or three engine rooms or whatever it is obviously some people are engine room locked if they don't have the admiral's key the better off you're going to be we're going to send all of our troops now you see, I said we're not using flares often. We are using flares occasionally though. You definitely want to get onto that engine room before those shocks come off. Otherwise bad things are gonna happen. So Z, 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 Sleepyhead. We have beaten them by probably eight seconds because they just ran into my minefield and got crushed. So uh, winning for the most part, and but don't focus too much on winning in the early season. Obviously, the higher you can get, the the more your chests are going to have, but don't spend your unlock keys or your tokens just to win because you'll regret it later on in the season. All of None of these things are new. This base looks fairly awesome, actually. I really, really like this layout. I might actually steal it just because there's no way to get your troops up there unless you use flares, of course. But... This is neat. I like this a lot. We're going to attack it right in the middle and we're going to send our troops just willy nilly and hope for the best. The fact that they've got their flamethrowers towards the outside is going to be a benefit for them. And I am going to wait until I use my second wind. I've been using second wind way too early. And as a result, we're getting riflemen at low, low levels instead of getting um, warriors at a higher level, which would be far, far more beneficial. So our warriors are going to heal themselves. As you can see there, they're getting health back ever so slowly, but it's not going to be enough for these flamethrowers on this side, I don't think. So instead of trying to keep them alive, we're going to use our GBE to get some extra warriors, and we're going to lose probably. I mean, we're still going to be about 305, something like that, but it's very, very unlikely that we're going to get anywhere close. Now, don't throw a flare too early. Because we have level 1 flares, you have to wait until they get close, and now we're going to throw our flare, and that's going to let us get onto that engine room as opposed to watching our flare expire. Look, that flare almost expired already. Three minutes, not good enough to win unless you're sitting at, like, rank 10 or something like that. So, Squiggles McGee beating us by nine seconds. I am in apparay ski mode, so I'm going to use that as my excuse. It's also the excuse why the face cam is turned off at the moment. You don't need to see my helmet head, but we're going to drop seven boats on this left-hand side with Kavon. Then we're going to drop one back in there and just use all of our GBE to keep all of our warriors alive as best as we possibly, possibly can, hoping that we can get into this engine room as you can see here, as people start to have boom cannons and things, it's going to be a bloodbath. We are using all sorts of gunboat energy, keeping these troops alive with Kavan, and we're still losing troops like crazy. So get the heck out of three engine rooms as soon as you possibly, possibly can. Otherwise, you're just not going to be having a heck of a lot of good times here. So let's get in on this last engine room, trying to get this down. This person delayed their tactics to 
start their attack a little bit late, and we are also started warships a little bit. So Syed, Said, whatever the heck you want to pronounce that name, um, they're going to have a bit of difficulty on that right-hand side minefield, so I think we're going to be able to pull this win off. Oh, they're going to try and do a late second win. I don't think that's going to work, though, but maybe, actually. Nonetheless, um, this is going to be my last attack, my last replay. We are heading back out on the icy, icy powder. So do icy powder. There's a bit of a oxymoron. Nonetheless, let me know what you're doing in Warships, if you've done anything differently in your tech tree, how you're doing, what rank you're at, and when you think you'll be able to get to four engine rooms and or gold. I don't even know what my time was. I think maybe we won. I'm hoping that I was faster than three minutes, 10 seconds. Always nice to finish on a win, and we did. So anyways, that is Warships, your early season tech tips. Also, don't he forget to check, check the comments because there are so many smart players out there commenting on my videos and they are going to make all sorts of suggestions and say things like shock mines are more important than barrage or something smart and then someone's going to argue with them in the comments. So please do check the comments. Otherwise, as always, thank you for coming in. Sorry if my mic sounds like crap. I had to steal a headset from my son. I shall talk to you later. Thanks for coming in. Peace.